Hello fellow freelancers. So today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that has come across, uh, well actually came across during one of my coaching sessions and so actually there might be, I might have mentioned it in one of the videos that I have of uh, when I take myself during my uh, coaching session, but I thought it was a topic that deserved a bit more to be looked at a bit more in depth. And this is uh, for your profiles. Your, in, uh, when I dealt with it in a coaching session, it had to do with your pros.com profile. But this could have to do with any one of your profiles that you have online, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's about me, whether it's pros.com or any one of those. And so here's what happened. I was uh, talking to this lady, basically. I was, I was coaching her and we were going through her profile, everything. And she was like, oh, I came across this because I had told her and I've mentioned this in the videos before. If you're not sure how to structure your profile, uh, then look at other people and see what catches your eye, what looks good, what you think works. And then, you know, feel free to use that same style. And that way you can kind of copy from the best. You can learn from the best. And so anyway, she had done this. And then she was saying, she's like, oh, I found this uh, lady's profile that looked really nice. And it was, uh, you know, she said it was short and sweet. And which right away set off alarm bells. And so I asked her to show it to me. And, and yeah, it was a lady who obviously had a lot of experience translating and, uh, and had a lot of uh, positive reviews. But, you know, had a very short and sweet thing, you know, just said translator, uh, the languages and kind of a, a quote there and whatever. Very little information. And uh, so she wanted to make her profile, the lady I was talking to wanted to make her profile just like this one. And so I told her, I was like, look, I don't think that's, I don't think that's something you should do because this lady who has a very short and sweet profile obviously has a, quite a bit of experience, which means she probably already has regular clients. She probably doesn't have to rely on pros.com to get most of her clients now. Either she already has regular clients or the clients she's getting now are probably referrals, word of mouth, you know, people from the clients she already has. And uh, so here, in fact, what she's probably trying to do, and at least what it looked like to me, was she's probably trying to whittle it down. In fact, she didn't even have a resume there. She said, resume available upon request. Everything was available upon request and you had to contact her, which to me seems like she's trying to whittle down the number of requests she get, gets because she, she has enough work for now. And you'll see this every now and then. And unfortunately, this happens especially with people who have a lot of experience, who are top rated. So if you search for translators, I'm saying on pros.com, if you, if you search for translators, say in your language combination or something like that, the ones who are on the top, so pros.com sorts it out by number of kudos points for some reason, I'm not sure why. Uh, but then you can sort it out in different ways later if you want to. But usually people with a lot of kudos points are the ones who have quite a bit of experience. They'll have their own glossaries, they'll have this, that, and the other. And often they'll have a whole lot of information with all their portfolios and everything like that, which is great. But sometimes they take out a lot of information just because They've been inundated with, with requests from, uh, you know, people who come across their names whenever they search on pros.com because they're the first names that pop up and they don't want to deal with all these requests coming their way because they already have regular clients. So you kind of need to use your own judgment uh, when you look at these things. As a general rule, I say when you're first starting out, put as much information there as possible. You want to be as transparent as possible and just say every, I mean, you don't have to talk about that time you got drunk on the snowboarding trip, whatever. But obviously, anything that has to do with your job with translation. And even as I mentioned a couple videos ago, even if you worked in a place that didn't have anything to do with translation, but, um, you know, and it was something else completely, maybe emphasize what you did in terms of languages or in terms of translation or copy editing or anything along those lines in that job. And so just list everything, list many ways to contact you, uh, list, uh, have your resume there, you know, all that information just so they can find everything they need for you. If you see another profile that seems short and sweet, I'm going to guess, chances are they already have enough, uh, enough clientele and they don't need to worry about it too much. Or they're just starting out and haven't made their profile at all. I mean, you know, you see those too. But usually when you copy, you, you're looking for people with some experience and people who, uh, who seem to know what they're doing. And you'll see this, by the way, for all profiles. A lot of people in uh, LinkedIn, people tend to be, you know, just put everything out there regardless. And so there you'll find a lot more information. But about me, I've definitely seen it with just, you know, people like to be a bit artsy and they'll just put, you know, two lines there and then just a big picture of a sunset or something. And, you know, just because it's a famous person or someone who's well-known doesn't mean that you should be doing the same thing. Uh, I would recommend 
wherever you put your profile, and I usually recommend putting it as many places as possible, you want to be as findable as possible. So this means LinkedIn, this means pros.com, Translators Cafe, about.me, um, and wherever else you use. You know, a lot of these websites are country specific or, or industry specific and stuff like that. I would recommend listing a whole lot of, I mean, just put the same information. Once you put it in one place, you can pretty much just copy and paste it to the other places. And um, at least you are, people, you're searchable. You're very searchable and people can find all your information right away. You don't want to have to make a potential client jump through hoops, contact you too many times for the information. It should be right there for them to find. So that's just kind of a word of warning for when you see, I, I, I still think when you're first setting up your profile, it's very good to look at other people's profiles to get an idea of what works, what doesn't, what people can do with their profile. Sometimes you're, it looks cool what they were able to do and you're like, oh wow, I want to try to do the same thing. And, uh, and so you can try to figure it out. But also keep in mind some of the consequences and keep in mind you know, that, that exactly some of these guys are not in your same shoes. Some of these other people are not constantly looking for new clients because they're not trying to build up their business. It's already built up. So they're just, they just have it there kind of as a placeholder almost. And uh, so just use your judgment and keep this stuff in mind when you are looking for new jobs and when you're trying to create your own profile to find these jobs. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you can find this useful. And uh, I hope when you're setting up your online profile that you're able to apply this. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, it's just your common judgment. When you look at... Uh, when you, when you look at other people's profiles, you can sort of get an, an idea of what their goal is or what they'll get out of that uh, profile. So, you know, you can use your judgment and, and do it accordingly. So, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you do, please don't forget to click thumbs up so I know. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet for more stuff for freelancers, freelance translators. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye. Sabidum.